Welcome to Friday, July 22nd, 2022. This podcast brought to you today by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the state. Cowboy State Daily. Sign up for their daily newsletter and check them out on their Facebook page. As we head on into the day today, it's really not going to be any different. Really, no matter where you are in the western United States, the weather today will be very close to what it was yesterday. Hot and dry for many, hot with some thunderstorms for others. However, changes are coming as we are going to be looking at the weekend and next week. The weather pattern is going to shift around a little bit. Subtropical moisture, though, is mostly for another day going to be in Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado. Those are the areas that will continue to get some rain. Temperatures are going to ease some as we work our way into this weekend, more towards the middle of next week. The subtropical moisture continues to be bottled up down here. There has been a lot of rain in northern and northwest New Mexico and far southern areas of Arizona, right along the uh, U.S.-Mexico border. This has been a very wet, rainy area here for the last several days in a row because the subtropical moisture is just kind of trapped there. You can see a ring of dryness around that. However, through the course of the weekend, this moisture is going to get sprung free. It's going to have an opportunity to work its way back to the north again. And as that happens and other things shift around, the weather pattern starts to look a lot different. Here's today's forecast chart. This is for later this afternoon. The high is right on top of the Four Corners region. We've got this weak low and trough coming into the Pacific Northwest. This isn't going to do much. It's going to ride along around up here and really not be much of a factor. Although, you know, one thing to watch out for, for you folks in uh, northeastern Wyoming, western South Dakota, kind of keep an eye on Sunday evening and Sunday night. As that wave goes through, there might be some severe weather up there late Sunday into Monday, something to keep in mind. Now, by Monday, things begin to change. This is today. By Monday, the high is shifting to the east, as we expected, with high pressure building along the west coast. And with the high here, building off the coast of British Columbia, that's going to turn the jet stream coming in from the northwest now into the northern tier. And as that high pressure continues to move eastward, the door opens for this trough to cut away its way south like this by the middle of next week. As we go forward with the subtropical moisture in this pattern, you'll see how things kind of evolve. The brown represents where the air is really dry and you're not really going to get much weather in terms of showers or thunderstorms. The white and green and blue areas is where the areas will be more favorable for rainfall and showers and thunderstorms. So this is by late this afternoon. Notice eastern Wyoming, eastern Montana, eastern Colorado into the region here, the air is pretty dry, but you see the arch of green here trying to push a little bit more to the north and east. So southwestern Wyoming and into parts of Utah, northwest Colorado today, you may see an uptick in clouds and thunderstorms late this afternoon and this evening. Now, this is by Saturday afternoon. Notice it makes a further push to the east, gets a little bit deeper, gets in the front range of southern Wyoming and northern Colorado. But notice the air is still dry for places like Jackson, Idaho, southern and southwest Montana, and western Wyoming. So the monsoon really does not get into the area, those areas, by tomorrow. By tomorrow afternoon, this is where the thunderstorm activity is going to be. Really hanging close to the mountains and the Continental Divide. A bit more activity out here into the Corn Belt and Plains states. Could see some severe weather here this weekend and across Minnesota and Wisconsin. And then this is associated with that little low tracking along the U.S.-Canadian border. But look what happens as we get on into Sunday. The moisture gets deeper. There's a lot more blue there. We're going to need to watch out for flash flooding potential Sunday and even Saturday in the heavier thunderstorms in Colorado and southern Wyoming over the burn scar areas. This is something that happened last week last Friday and Saturday. So I'm going to keep that an eye, keep an eye on that this weekend. Notice though, the monsoon still kind of stays out of northwestern Wyoming, still staying out of Yellowstone and Jackson and back into the northwest United States here. This area of moisture right here is where that severe weather in northeastern Wyoming and western South Dakota could be Sunday evening and Sunday night into Monday morning. Look at Sunday afternoon. Notice the extension goes a lot further north now in the northern Wyoming as well as southern Montana. Along and east of the divide here into Wyoming is where a lot of thunderstorms will be, but you can see how it's drier here in western Wyoming in that pattern. The monsoon just doesn't get into there. But look at this arch of heavy thunderstorm activity that will go into parts of the Midwest and Corn Belt 
This will be good news for Kansas and parts of Missouri that really need the rain. At least look at the precipitation forecast through the weekend and into early next week. There's your arch of subtropical moisture going around and getting into the Corn Belt. Notice, though, this area right here is just going to be under high pressure and the air is going to be a lot drier and thunderstorm chances are going to be much lower. But a lot of the weather that we're going to see is going to be really concentrated along and east of the divide. And this is why. This is by next Thursday morning. We've got the low going across southern Canada. This is a pretty impressive low for July with the highs split up. As we showed you yesterday, a high will go to the southeast. A high will go to the west coast and the Pacific Northwest. Those will be the bullseyes of the heat building mid to late next week. That blue arrow, arrow, though, is showing that winds aloft are coming in from the northwest, but also on the ground as well. So this will send cooler air into the region east of the divide. It's probably not going to make it west of the divide, but east of the divide through the northern plains, the eastern parts of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado will feel cooler air come in. This will be especially true Wednesday and Thursday of next week. This will also lead to upslope conditions along the divide, which will lead to cooler weather and an enhanced chance of shower and thunderstorm activity as we get into the middle to the end parts of next week. And if you look how temperatures evolve, here's today's heat. Look at all the orange, above normal temperatures, very hot conditions for most of the nation here, except for the northwest and the southeast. But as we go into next Wednesday, this is by next Wednesday, notice there is a replacement of orange and red with green and blue. And you can see the dividing line between the real warm and the cooler air coming in. This is by Wednesday afternoon. This is by Thursday afternoon. The cooler air continues to push further south and temperatures are actually going to be below average as we get into Wednesday and Thursday of next week in a large part of the central and northern high plains and parts of the Rockies and back into the desert southwest. You can see the heat though, really warm conditions developing in Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, very warm conditions as well building in the southeastern United States. This is by next Friday. Look at this, maybe all the way getting close to Dallas that cool air could get. Now it's relative, okay? It doesn't mean cold. What it does mean instead of uh, maybe the string of 100 degree heat next week gets broken in parts of Oklahoma and Texas and into the southern plains where they could really use a break. But there you can see they're going to be baking in the Pacific Northwest. This is how the weather works, folks. In the summer, you're not going to get everybody warm at the same time, everybody cool at the same time. We're seeing kind of a reversal of fortune. This area has been cooler than average for most of July. This part of the country as well, believe it or not. But we're just basically seeing a 180, the cooler conditions, at least for a bit. I don't think this is a long-term trend, but it is going to give the central United States and parts of the Western High Plains and Rockies a break from the heat at times next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.